Hey there, once again, YouTube. So I do have a quick update for you about something that occurred. I wasn't going to do a video tonight. Right now it's 12.02 a.m., December 15, 2019. So it was just December 14th, but I just got home from work. And while I was at work, I noticed that there was an earthquake and a few aftershocks and a little bit of swarming prior to the main shock that occurred around this area near Mary Lake. And you can see it was a magnitude 3.2, which I'll show in just a second. But this is what we should see for a 3.2 at Yellowstone. It shows on virtually every single seismic station, even though it's just 3.2. And even some of the smaller quakes did show on, for example, YNR, YUF. So Yellowstone did see a magnitude 3.2 today, which isn't major in other places, even for Yellowstone. But the thing is, is it's been a while since we've seen a magnitude 3.2 at Yellowstone. Now let's go to the USGS earthquake map right over here. Zoom into the Yellowstone area and see the exact location where this earthquake occurred. It occurred within inside the Caldera boundary, actually. Let's go to terrain, just to see where it's at. Okay, so here's Yellowstone National Park right here. Give it a second. Okay, so the Caldera boundary is right about this location right around here. Remember, it's a super volcanic complex. I mean, it doesn't always see super volcanic eruptions, but the last major eruption left a Caldera imprint huge. I forget exactly how big, but it's like 40 by 50 miles or something like that. Massive Caldera imprint from a massive eruption a long time ago, but, you know, it's it's been a while since we've seen that. Probably will be a while too, but you never know. Now, this earthquake occurred. Notice we have Yellowstone Lake and West Thumb Lake right down here. And zoom in. It's a mountain, actually, so I wouldn't be surprised if Station YML was the closest. And it occurred between Mary Mountain and Beach Lake. And Mary Lake is at this little teeny tiny lake near Mary Mountain. This little tiny tiny lake right here this is where the 3.2 occurred which is somewhat near a location where there has been a little bit of swing over the past few months nothing too crazy but few energetic swarms with small magnitudes but this is the largest we've seen in a while again this was a 3.2 at 3.3 kilometers in depth so pretty shallow remember that's at sea level zero kilometers would be sea level so this 3.3 kilometers below sea level now, it occurred at 2.09 UTC, December 15, 2019, which was, I'm going to say, like six hours ago or so, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. Um, so, when was the last time the Yellowstone actually saw a magnitude 3.2 earthquake? Now, technically, a 3.2 or larger has not occurred since August 15th of this year, 2019, but that doesn't really count because that was far to the south, even outside the perimeter of Yellowstone National Park, I believe right on the border of the uh, National Park itself. So I'm not really going to count that one. And the other one would be a 3.3 right out here, somewhat near the eastern border of Yellowstone National Park. But to find the most recent actually within the caldera itself, uh, let's see. So the last one to hit Yellowstone National Park itself was a 3.3 and 9.4 kilometers in depth in 2017. However, I'm not seeing one inside the caldera. Let's see. Let's Let's keep going. Let's keep going. 3.6, 3.4, 4.4, that was part of the 2017 Yellowstone Earthquake Swarm. Keep going, keep going, keep going. My goodness, it has been a while, hasn't it? Let's keep going, let's keep going. Oh, wait, oh. Now, this actually isn't inside the caldera, but I'm going to count this one. So, since about 2017 from the February Swarm, or since about 2014 for the Norris area and a little bit north of Norris as well. So it's been a little while, guys, since we have seen a 3.2 or so actually within the caldera boundary itself. So let's take a look at the waveforms, shall we? So for the most recent earthquake, let's take a look at the seismic stations reported by USGS, and we'll take a look at the waveforms of those events just real fast. Let's click Origin, go to Phases, Arrival time. Let's see. Of course, like I thought, YML was the closest seismic station with YNR at Norris being the second closest station, Borehole 208 being the third closest station, apparently, and YLT being the fourth. So we're going to take a look at YML in Swarm and these four stations in the seismic program waves. So here we are in the seismic program waves, and we do have the waveform distribution from the four closest seismic stations, which of course YML was the closest to this event. Now zooming in, you can see normal VT earthquake with some lower frequencies along the S wave, which we should mainly see, but YML has shown a different story. It's a very kind of strange looking earthquake, and I'll show you that in the seismic program swarm in just a second. 
Again, this is one of the largest earthquakes within Yellowstone called there for many years, actually. But still, it's only a 3.2. But regardless, we should always keep an eye on this area no matter what's going on. So just keep a close eye on it. Let's take a look at this in the seismic program swarm just real fast. Now, here we have seismic station YML, short period vertical in the WY network, 01 location code. Now, we're going to scroll down just a little bit to see these events. And you can tell that prior to this, there were definitely some earthquakes, especially a very small swarm starting right about here. Very small earthquakes, though. I'm going to say largest was probably around a magnitude 1, maybe, at the largest. Only about, I'm going to say, four earthquakes right there, starting at about 2037 UTC, right in the middle. And then going forward, here we have the magnitude 3.2, which was pretty shallow, actually. And take a look at the P arrival. Notice that it's a very, very odd looking earthquake. You notice that normally this whole top area should be slanted kind of like this. Like we usually see, like, for example, with these earthquakes, notice how it's slanted like that. But this one is very strange. I mean, very, very odd. And of course, most of the stations that are short period in Yellowstone do not record beyond about 31,000 amplitude counts. So the amplitude have been cut right here, sadly. But there are some broadband stations around the area that can get a good look at this event. And we see a downwards going P wave, actually. Most I see at Yellowstone are going up. That means the first arrival of this on this station was showing that the ground sunk downwards first instead of coming up first. Because this is a short period vertical station, meaning Every line that goes up is up, and every line that goes down is down. Going forward after this, let me turn on the spectrogram, we did see a few aftershocks, actually, probably ranging between about 2.0, or excuse me, about 1.0 to 2.0. Some very small ones going forward. Not seeing too, too much, though, but after this 3.2, I would not be surprised if we saw an earthquake swarm break out in this area. Because it has been swarming around Mary Mountain for a little while now. Very, very small swarming. But still, it's something that collectively we should definitely keep an eye on. No matter what happens. And here's a look at this earthquake at, on YNR. Broadband vertical, WY01. Now I put a 1 hertz high pass filter because it is a broadband station. And we are seeing some of those strange strong higher frequencies i mean this looks more normal to me now this looks more like a normal earthquake but still it's showing those strong high range frequencies which we usually see in a vt earthquake but i mean it's not showing it like yml is showing it over here nothing close because to me it just looks weird right there but still this is from ynr the second closest station actually some lower range frequencies in the coda of the earthquake but that is to be expected actually but still, we need to keep an eye on this area. Again, second closest seismic station, and we did see some aftershocks related to this event. Now I'm back at the USGS earthquake map at 12.18 a.m., December 15, 2019, Pacific time. And we're just going to go to the world, and we did not see much else, actually, except for, let me zoom into the Philippines. We actually saw a magnitude 7 downgraded. I don't know if it was downgraded, but... It's around a magnitude 7. It's a magnitude 6.8 at 22.4 kilometers in depth in the Philippines and many aftershocks ranging from about 5.7, even a little lower than that. And let's see here. Let's see. Liquefaction estimate says that there's a significant area affected. No estimated fatalities or economic losses, thank goodness, and no possible landslides. But still, liquefaction was probably did occur. There's the moment tensor for this. And although... Not many people know about USGS in the Philippines. Still, 101 people reported to USGS that they did feel this earthquake. So, many more may come in in the coming hours. That's it for right now, guys. I'll keep an eye on Yellowstone and other areas around the world. God bless. Love you guys. And I'll see you later.